Hola amigos, this is Level 12, and today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite shows as of right now, is Hogan's Heroes, a sitcom about World War II. I'm not joking, that is the actual premise of the show. Now, um, this is the, the, the description of the show, unlike Wikipedia and the official description on many websites and blogs, is Hogan's Heroes is an American television sitcom set in a German prisoner of war camp, POW, during World War II. I'm not joking. It now, I'll I'll let me just say this: the show did star an actor who was uh, uh, in a German concentration camp for three years. So they they were the show was good about not putting in things about the Holocaust and the murders and all the the sad things. It did have an episode on D-Day, however. It did have that. Um, but the show overall was very respectful of the things you don't make comedy about. It mostly it mostly poked fun at the incompetence of the German officers in the show. But you'll see. You'll see in a second. It's it's actually a pretty decent show. So, um, some stats about the show. It ran from September 17th, 1965 to March 28th, 1971. Uh, it aired for six years in total. Uh, it had 168 episodes. Uh, the first episode, the pilot, was in black and white. It was created by Bernard Fine and Albert S. Ruddy. There were some legal issues that they almost got sued for, but nothing ever came of it. Uh, many episodes were worked on by Edward H. Feldman, Lawrence Marks, and Gene Reynolds. For those of you that don't know, Gene Reynolds also did MASH, another military comedy show uh, about the Korean War this time. I like MASH as well. Uh, and the show starred Bob Crane, Werner Klimperer, John Banner, Robert Clary, Richard Dawson, Ivan Dixon, and Larry Hovis. The final season introduced Kenneth Washington, who replaced Ivan Dixon for different reasons. I have only seen the first three seasons. I'm on like 65, 67 episode count number wise. Um, but I feel like I've seen enough of the show to talk about it. I, again, because I'm not on season six, I don't really know much about Kenneth Washington's character, so he isn't on here, but I can guarantee you he's not as good as Ivan Dixon or really anywhere near there. Let me, let me just say that. So the premise for each episode of the show, uh, is about Colonel Hogan, played by Bob Crane and his men, are doing one of three things almost every episode. Either destroying dr German transportation lines slash military depots, uh, like train lines and roads and military depots as in ammunition dumps and uh, where they factories and stuff like that uh, transporting soldiers escaping other stalocks because stalock 13 the one they reside in has a uh, has a thing about uh, b never having been escaped no one has ever escaped stalock 13 and that's the big shtick and that's why it works uh, or German enforcements like people who defect from Germany and they help them get through the underground or they just stop impeding German advancement, all while avoiding detection from Colonel Klink, played by Warner Klemperer. It's an Austrian name, leave me alone. Uh, and they accomplish this by using an elaborate tunnel system known as the Underground, and radio contact from London, who is known as Papa Bear, at least in the first season. Uh, the men get away with a lot more than they probably should have due to the incompetence and fear of being sent to the Russian front uh, by Sergeant Schultz, who's played by John Banner. And the reason Stalag 13 is so perfect is because no one suspects Stalag 13 because no one has ever escaped Stalag 13. And it's just great because when no one's harking down your neck, it's so much easier to do things. Now, some of you may be wondering, what do they do with the Nazi symbolism? Well, I'll tell you, in all 67 episodes that I've seen so far, they've only said Nazi three times. And I'm pretty sure two of them were by Robert Clary, the Holocaust survivor guy. Um... Yeah, they really don't use the word Nazi a lot. They use Third Reich a, a, a good chunk. They say Krauts and Jerry's when I know they could have inserted Nazi. Uh, they say that the Hitler thing, the, the, the pledging their allegiance to him with the hand movements. They do that. They do that a lot. They do that. Uh, quite oh, about once every episode. Uh, there's also a lot of swastikas everywhere and pictures of Hitler everywhere and... One character even dressed up as Hitler and impersonated him. Ah, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, there are some things in there that I know would not fly today on today television. And grand and uh, also the show uh, aired 20 years after uh, World War II ended. So, you know, uh, it's not a bad show. It's not a disrespectful show. But I know there are some things that they just got away with because it was the 60s that I know they wouldn't be able to get away with now. But 
I digress. So first we are going to talk about Colonel Hogan, the main character played by Bob Crane. He is the suave, cunning, charming, and charismatic senior prisoner of war at Stalag 13. And uh, there's some more information about Bob Crane I can't include on here, but be on the lookout for that video. Uh, so uh, Colonel Hogan deals with Colonel Clank. Uh, he makes plans. He's the main head planner guy between London and what they do in the uh, Stalag. And he's the one that comes up with all all the solutions, uh, harebrained as they are, and often fast talks many German officers into getting what he wants. He often fast talks uh, General Burkhalter, who is uh, common to come around, and a Gestapo officer whose name I can't remember at this moment in time, but it starts with an H, and that's his main job, and he does it really well. Uh, the main, he, he's, again, as I said, the main character and landed the role after doing many homely roles and guest appearances on other shows such as the Dick Van Dyke show and a, a reoccurring role on a, another show I can't really remember the name of right now but he really didn't do much after uh, Hogan's Heroes. He kind of got stuck being Hogan and uh, also he did dinner theater and some other things which we can't talk about right now. So next is Colonel Clink played by Warner Klemperer. He is the Commandant of Stalag 13 and a veteran of World War 1. One of the main images for the show is his World War 1 helmet with the spike on it with Hogan's hat leaning off of it. That's the banner for the show. Uh, he's very clueless and often outsmarted by Hogan despite the perfect record he mentions to every officer that graces the camp. So he's not dumb per se, but he does everything he can to keep Stalag 13 having a gleaming record so he doesn't go to the Russian front because that scares him. Also something I should mention right now is they are all Air Force, they're all Air Force men. Uh, the only one I'm kind of iffy about is Kench but whatever. Uh, but they've all done time in the Air Force or have been on planes and something like that. It's Air Force. That's that's a something I felt I should mention. Um, Werner Klemperer won two Emmys for his role as Clink uh, d while the show was airing because he does play Clink very well. Uh, he also starred in other World War II films and shows. I haven't seen any of those. I assume he's good in them because he's good in uh, 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 this show. I don't know, but uh, something uh, I d uh, this picture doesn't show of him, but he has a monocle and it never falls out. I don't know how. Uh, I heard you have to train your muscle to keep the monocle there because he doesn't have a chain on it. I don't know. Next we have Sergeant Schultz played by John Banner, another German, Prussian, Austrian guy, I don't know. Uh, he's the sergeant of the guards at Stalag 13 and the highest ranking soldier other than Clink. He's not an officer. Uh, that's a lieutenant, but whatever. He's very bumbling and cowardly guard. Uh, he often lets Hogan and his men get away with their activities for fear of being sent to the Russian front because if they mess up bad at Stalag 13, they, they get replaced and sent to the Russian front, which uh, is not a good place you want to be during war. I can guarantee you that. Uh, he's also easily bribed with food. Uh, he's that uh, that jokey fat officer. You know you know the joke they play of the, the fat guards. You know, it's, it's that joke. Uh, he sparked the meme of I know nothing nothing if you watch the show you understand he does it very well but any merch you see other than the the helm attached thing i talked about earlier it's just him being like i know nothing nothing i can't do it as well but just just look up a clip of that after this uh he died two years after hogan's heroes finished airing in 1973 but before that he did do again like warner klimperer he did like uh other World War II related films and shows and stuff like that. So now we are on to Louis Lebeau who was played by Robert Clary and he's the former corporal of the French Air Force and current cook of Hogan's Barracks and he's also a part-time tailor of the unit along with Newkirk so he's pretty energetic. Uh, Lebeau often distracts the guards by either making a scene with uh, with other prisoners or with his food because he is a French cook and he loves cooking and he also loves France. Many times he says Viva la France and there's one episode where he actually gets so upset uh, that they stole a French painting. He steals it back. <laughs> he is also the main one that handles the dogs and just talks to them in French and they just kind of listen. It, it's all good there. And does what he can to complete the mission at hand. Like, he, he enjoys doing this. So, Robert Clary spent three years in a concentration camp and wrote a book called From the Holocaust to Hogan's Heroes, the autobiography of Robert Clary. And I just, I just gotta say, I, I don't know why, how he got put on the show. I really want to read his book to figure that out. Uh, 
He also, you know how like they would they would brand people. Yeah, he has a brand on his arm. Uh, he go he gives talks. Well, he gave talks. I don't know if he still does, but sometimes he gives talks about his experience in the Holocaust and things like that. And you know, I really want to buy his book. Uh, he's also one of the few, one of only two people still alive. Uh, everyone on the that played on the show is dead except for him and Kenneth Washington. Uh, it's real sad. Uh, I miss a lot of the people that played on the show. Uh, they they were all great. Uh, next we have Peter Newkirk, played by Richard Dawson, and I love Richard Dawson. I don't think I've expressed to y'all how much I love Richard Dawson, but whatever. He's the formal corporal of the British Royal Air Force and current jack-of-all-trades for the underground. He does a lot. He's very cynical, and he often makes wisecracks and voices his worries about the plans, while also just showing off his talents as a pickpocket, a locksmith, a magician, a tailor, and a voice impressionist. He's done German officers. He's done Churchill. He's done Hitler. They all do Hitler at one point. Um, but yeah, his previous profession was, like, pickpocket slash magician, so, like, that's his shtick, and it's, it's great. I love it. So Richard Dawson originally tried for the part of Hogan, however they're like, you don't sound American enough, so they just made him Newkirk because they did like him. So Dawson gave the character originally a Liverpool accent, however the producers were like, yeah, no, no American knows that's British. So he switched to a Cockney accent, which Cockney, Essex, they sound pretty similar to me, so I would have guessed Essex. However, while in the German dub, he has a stutter. So this show aired internationally, and the people who dubbed it in German couldn't give him the, the British accent, so they gave him a stutter, and when American fan fiction writers found this out, they're like, oh, I must give him a stutter too! It's it's the most annoying thing when I go to read fan fictions that it's I find his stutter, and it's quite annoying. Richard Dawson is one of the few people after Hogan's Heroes that actually did crap after Hogan's Heroes. He did Match Game, Family Feud, and a, a few other things. It's great. I love it. So, next we have Andrew Carter, played by Larry Hovis. Uh, he's a pyromaniac technical sergeant of the U.S. Air Force and bomb maker for the underground. That's, that's his thing. He's very goofy and optimistic and is often the butt of jokes. However, Carter is the go-to man for bombs and forged documents because he has a background in chemistry. Uh, and he also ran a, a drugstore. His big claims to fame are blowing up his high school gym while he was in high school and his Hitler impression. There is an entire episode dedicated to making him look like Hitler and him just yelling and being Hitler for an entire episode and there are so many images of that but I couldn't show that because listen they may show swastikas they may say things I can't repeat but I will not show that stuff not I uh Hovis's character was only meant to appear in the pilot because in the pilot he switches place with a character named Olsen however the actor for Olsen decided to like not do the show because he's like you can only take a sergeant character so far which opened the door for Larry Hovis and Larry Hovis was like yeah I'll do it and got him money he really didn't do much after Hogan's Hero so he he was set for a while and then finally we have James Kinch Kinch is a nickname I can't pronounce his the actual character's last name so we're just gonna call him Kinch and he's played by Ivan Dixon he's a sergeant of the U.S. Air Force and former telephone company worker for Detroit uh, did I, I don't know the actual title, but there we go. He's really relaxed most of the time. He's pretty cool, pretty calm, pretty casual. And Kench is the radio operator between the underground and London. He doesn't go on missions a lot. And it's due to his speciality with the radios, because, like, if the radio contact were to drop, they wouldn't get messages from London, and they would be kind of blind sending men and doing things against London orders. He's also unable to pass a German author because he's black. There's actually um, a joke in one of the first episodes about I need some volunteers to pretend to be German officers and Kench was like, I'll do it. And Hogan was like, it's not time for jokes. And listen, I laughed so hard at that. I love that. That was one of my favorite jokes. So uh, Dixon left because he felt he couldn't take the character any further because he's like, yeah, like, I'm this radio guy. I can't do much with that. But he did continue to work in Hollywood and actually did some pretty, uh, good movies. Uh, I haven't watched any of them, but, uh, from what I checked out, they're all very high rated. So, that is Hogan's Heroes. It is one of my favorite shows and I've been binge watching it for the past, like, what, two weeks? It's really good. I highly recommend y'all check it out. Um, there is a way to watch it online. Uh, it's not legal, so I won't put that in the description, but literally just type in Hogan's Heroes, watch online, and it's the first link that pops up. 
I'm sure if y'all are so inclined, you can find it. Um, but yeah, it's a show made for a different time, and it's not disrespectful, as I said before, but there are some questionable things in it, like, very questionable. Uh, but if they didn't put those things in there, it wouldn't be accurate, but listen, listen. This the entire show was met with controversy when it was suggested. It's... Just watch MASH if you don't want the controversy. Anyway, so, uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more random fandom things. Ciao, chicos.